Hey everyone, welcome to another video. In my last video, you learned how to take the photos for a focus stack fully handheld and manually. And in this one, I'm going to show you how to take a series of images like this and combine them in focus stacking software on the computer to get a final focus stacked image. For this demonstration, I've picked out this image of a spotty eyed drone fly that I took last summer. And this is a fairly clean stack. I don't think it will take too much work, but I think it's a good demonstration for some of my more basic stacking techniques. So the first step of the process, and one of the most important, is actually selecting which input images are going to go into your final focus stack. And it's easy to think that, okay, focus stacking is just about getting your entire subject in focus. So you want to get as deep a focus stack as you can in the field and use all of those images to get the whole thing in focus. And the problem with this is that it can often result in an image that looks quite flat. There's no depth left. So I like to think about focus stacking more about having more control over the depth of field and being able to get still get past the limitations of what is physically possible in a single image. But it's very rare that I'll actually do a focus stack that has my entire subject in focus. So for example, on portrait images, usually I'll just have the head of the subject in focus, or sometimes I will leave some of the background texture, some of the surface to fade out into out of focus because you want this nice transition from in focus to out of focus. One exception for me is when I'm doing a top down stack of some sort of texture, then I almost always will stack all the way through, including the surface, because I think that puts the focus on texture and then I have to get the depth with something like lighting. So for this image, I've started right here, right at the front of the subject and just kind of flipping through these gone all the way through to the eyes and my last image is all the way back here and the problem with this is you can see around this edge here some of these hairs are already in focus and if I stacked this all the way through these hairs and the edge of the eyes which are probably in focus somewhere around here that would overlap and that would create a little bit of a flat looking image and you wouldn't be able to see the distinction of the edge of the eyes quite as well so in this case I'm going to find an image somewhere probably right here and I'm going to use this one as my furthest back image in the focus stack. This can be hard to visualize on some images. In this case it was pretty clear because we've got this distinction on the edge of the eyes but in some images it's really difficult and it's partly a thing of experience but sometimes you just have to export all of the images you've taken into a stack and then experiment with different selections of the images to see what you think looks best. Another trick is that I'll often take more images in the field, take a greater depth of field, so I'll start further towards my, me and finish the stack further away from my subject if I have a subject that's still enough to do so, because that way that leaves me the creative control in post to be more selective with what sections I want in focus. So now I'm going to take these input images, have this, this one here as the last image, and select this as the first one and export these into my stacking software. So the stacking software that I use is Zarine Stacker, but there are other really good options like Helicon Focus or Affinity Photo that are also great for stacking. And this process should be fairly similar. It's more of just a thing of personal preference. So I've got my images here and I've used JPEGs in this case just to be a little bit lighter on my computer. But if you want the best image quality, you could definitely export these images as TIFFs. And the first thing I'm going to do is go into this stack window here. And you can see here there are two different stacking methods. There is Pmax and Dmap. And these both have their advantages. But in this case, I'm actually going to use the stacking method and do both first. And I'll explain why I'm doing this later. So just a brief pause for any Zarine users. When you're stacking using the DMAP method, this little pop-up will appear here that says set contrast threshold. And this seems a little bit confusing what this is doing at first. You can see it just makes more or less of the image black. But what this is pretty much doing, and I don't 100% understand it myself, but basically this is selecting which areas of the image are actually in focus and should be included, should be stacked properly. So I usually try and set this, especially when I've got like here in this image, I've got this fairly smooth background, out of focus background. And I try and set this so that any out of focus areas of the image are 
entirely black or almost entirely black. So in this case, somewhere around this here looks pretty good. You can see all of these out of focus areas are almost entirely black, but the entire main part of the subject is still sharp. And then here, just press OK, and that will run the stack a second time with the final process using these sections of the image. So now that both stacking methods are done, I can show you the reason that I use both methods for the stack. So let me just make these full screen. This is the DMAP stack, and right away you can see there's quite a few artifacts around here, especially in the background, but also, for example, if I zoom in somewhere down here where the legs are, the feet are overlapping, or around here, even in these sections of the leaf that the fly is sitting on, or in the hairs around the top of the head. And DMAP method tends to have some of these artifacts like this. And this is why I also use the PMAX method, which you can see right away, it's way more contrasty. And while this gets these overlapping areas, like up here with the hairs, handles those a lot better, I find it too cont contrasty to use this for the final image. And it also is very noisy in a lot of areas. So I use both stacking methods and will basically select the areas from each method that have worked well. So I'm going to go up here, edit, and start retouching. And this is where you can, retouching is where you can take one of the final images and basically paint in manually sections of the input images. And the first thing I'm gonna do right away, I'm starting with the DMAP image as my base image because the colors and contrast look a little bit better. And the first thing I'm gonna do is, you see the background here is really full of these artifacts and lines. And usually what I'll do when I have a stack with a large, fairly smooth out of focus background is I will take one of the input images, usually the furthest back input image, and basically just zoom in and paint in the background from this image. And you can see now that I've done this, I've got a much cleaner starting point. And the next thing that I'm going to do, and one of the really neat tricks that you can do in Zerine Stacker, is that I'm actually going to select the PMAX stack as my source image, which means that I'm taking PMAX stack on the left and retouching into the DMAP stack on the right. And what I'm now going to do is basically zoom in and pan around and find the sections of the stack that look better in the PMAX section. What you can do in Zerine, which is nice, is if I hold down S, this will show the input image on the right, which means that I can kind of switch back and forth and show which sections look better. So for example, this little artifacty area here looks a lot better in the PMAX stack. So I'm going to paint that in from there. Same with the area around the base of the legs. I'm doing this a little bit quickly, obviously, for the demonstration, uh, and I would probably take a little bit more time to do this carefully uh, for a proper edit. So here, those areas of the legs look better in PMAX. Same with, and this is one of the biggest things, hairs. So if you've got a hairy subject like a spider, the DMAP stack will almost always be super messy. Here you can see that the antenna have become a little bit translucent, that you can't really see the tips of the antenna in either stack. I'll show you afterwards how I'm going to deal with that. But I'm just going through. Again, up here, these hairy sections, I'm going to paint in from the PMAX image. It is a little bit contrasty, but this is way faster than manually dealing with these artifacts from the input images. So here, going through, and that section as well. And I think I've got most of it, and this already looks a lot better. Now you might have noticed I left this section here alone, and this is because often if I have some area next to my subject that isn't in focus, that isn't really important, I will actually just paint in this section from a single input image. So here, I'm going to find a section, uh, an image here, where that looks pretty good. Maybe this one, or yeah, around there, because nothing is really in focus, and that will make this area a bit less distracting. Actually, now that I know it, look at it, this leg here is out of focus, so I should probably use the backmost image here, because that way the leg will look natural. And I'm just going to paint this back image, like I did over the background, and just retouch this in here. You can see again when I'm holding S, that shows the input image as an overlap. And that already has just made that section of the image a lot less distracting. 
And this is often helpful, even if you have your subject quite deep in focus, quite a deep section of your subject in focus, you can actually use the background or the surface it's on and take a smaller selection of the stack or even just a single image for this section. And this will create much more natural looking depth on the background. Back to the image. For this section, I'm leaving the stacked image uh, for the section of Dream to Fly, but that has already created a much nicer, more natural depth if I compare this to one of the input images on the left. This just looks a lot smoother and more natural. So last thing is retouching sections that the stacking software just didn't get. For example, these antenna here. For this case, I'm going to zoom way in. You can see actually it's already a bit pixelated and I'm going to scan forward to where the antenna is in focus. And maybe I'll even zoom in a little bit more. And then here, I'm just going to find each section again. In this case, to scroll through the image, I can press hold shift and then scroll with mouse wheel and that will scroll through my input images. And here, I'm just going to find these sections of the antenna that are pretty much in focus and paint these in with a really fine brush over top of the eyes. As far as a quick demonstration, this stack is pretty much done. So what I would do now is just export this from Zareen. Uh, I usually run my focus stacks through Topaz Denoise AI to just get a little bit of the noise reduction and sharpening. And then I will bring it into Lightroom for a very final, just simple edit where I can do some masking, some final lighting contrast adjustments, and then I'll show you the final image. So I've picked out a second stack to show you this technique one more time. And this might look familiar from my previous video. And like before, I've just run this stack using both stacking methods. So you can see on the right, this is Pmax and this is Dmap. And I'm going to start the exact same way. Edit, start retouching. And then again, in this case, I've started with the Dmap image. And what has become a bit of an issue is these artifacts here. And also, like in the previous image, you can see that there's quite a bit of the areas here in focus that doesn't necessarily look that natural, especially if it's a flat surface. This example isn't that bad, but here's another example where you can see when this entire surface is in focus, it can look a bit unnatural, and this can be a challenge to work with with stacking. But in this case, I'm going to find an image where roughly the base of the mushroom, or the edge at the base of the mushrooms, is in focus something like that. And then I will paint this image in for these areas of the surface that, of the wood. Uh, this you can see here is a bit unnatural. I'll get back to that area afterwards. But again, picking out this section here and just painting that in for the surface. And already that looks much more natural because it has a more natural depth of field. So again, mentioned I'll come back to these areas and here I'm going to go a tiny bit further forward, find the area where the base of the mushrooms is in focus here, and paint that in as the image for these sections. For these overlapping areas, you have to be a little bit tricky. In this case, it doesn't look so bad, but you could even use an in-between image for this section here and create a fairly natural transition between the more further forward areas and the further back images. And the last thing I'm going to do here is go into the Pmax image, get some of these areas, where, for example, these strands of silk, probably spider silk, have overlapped. Get those in here into the image. And what you can see here, if I zoom into this edge here, actually neither stacking method has this particularly well. For example, in the Pmax, we've got this weird dark contrasting edge. And in the Dmap, it's got this kind of weird artifacting. So what I'm going to have to do is pick an input image and around the edge of the fungi, just paint in from that input image. And once I've got that finished, that is pretty much it again. It's fairly simple. And then here's the final stacked image. So I hope that these two examples have helped give a bit of a demonstration of my 
basic core technique for editing focus decks in post. Obviously, often you'll have images that aren't as well aligned as, as this. There will be more misalignment issues or the subject has moved, or especially at higher magnifications, there are often just more stacking artifacts. And in these situations, there are much more advanced techniques and more advanced tricks that you can do in your stacking software that will help get a clean result. But that is another topic for a deeper dive video. For now, this was just about my core technique, and I hope that this video has been helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any further questions, and otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.